<laughs> this is preconditioned aquarium water for a fresh water tank. I literally spent $14 just so I can empty it out and fill it back up with salt water. What is up blue reefers? Welcome back to step two of our reef tank build where we get to add water to our reef tank and get our ammonia cycle started. Such an exciting time. Nothing like that new tank smell. So for our first step, you always want to leak test your fish tank. Whether it's new or used, always leak test it. Fill it up with water and leave it there overnight. Water from the tap is just fine. You just wanna make sure that it's watertight. Once you're sure that you your aquarium is watertight. You want to clean it out. You don't want to use any harsh chemicals, but using vinegar and a cloth is just fine. I'm using regular white distilled vinegar. Definitely do not use Windex. You don't want that getting into your reef tank. You also want to make sure that you have a stable, sturdy, level surface to put the tank on. Because this is just a five gallon, pretty much any stable surface will be fine. If you're getting into something much bigger, of course, you want to make sure that it will be able to hold all of the weight of your reef tank. Now getting into the equipment for your reef tank, you want to start with a thermometer that's able to accurately measure the temperature of the water. This one here has like a green safe range, which makes it very easy to read. The optimal temperature for your reef tank is going to be anywhere from about 73 degrees Fahrenheit to up to 84 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, you're going to want a reliable aquarium heater. I did end up removing the water heater from the fish tank because it was actually overheating my water and consistently staying at 90 degrees Fahrenheit, which is too high. No matter how low I set the thermometer, it stayed at 90 degrees. So I ended up removing it from the tank altogether. Next, we have our stream pump. This is the Voyager Nano rated for 270 gallons per hour. This is the power head that is going to help water circulate and help with water flow and movement within the tank. And I will say I did find that this one was a bit too strong flow for this 5.5 gallon reef tank. I have used this one before in a five gallon tank with a Fluval Evo. I think because of the longer shape that that one had, this pump was fine, but this one being that it's taller and not longer, it produces too much flow for this tank. So I would recommend that you go lower. CJ does make even smaller pumps that you can use within the tank. And these are all things that it's great for you to be able to test out during your cycle while there's nothing in your tank. For filtration, I started off using the AquaClear Hang On Back Filter. This one is the AquaClear 20, which is rated for up to 20 gallons. Before you put your filter media in there, you want to give it a good rinse. The the biofiltration will have some powder residue on it, so you want to make sure that you rinse all of that out. I do recommend that you rinse it out with RO water. I got lazy here and I'm just using faucet water. Just to be on the safe side, you might want to just rinse it with RO or distilled water. So I kept the biofiltration in there along with the sponge filter, but I did remove the carbon filter at this time because you don't want to add any chemical filtration into your filter during the cycling process because you don't want it to just sterilize your tank while you're trying to build beneficial bacteria. And now we get into the fun part and that is adding our sand, our rock, and our water. As always, I'm using Carib Sea Aragali Fiji Pink Sand. It is my favorite sand. So normally I always put the sand first, then I put my rock on top. I kind of dig my rock into the sand. But every time I've done this in the past, I always get comments saying rock first, sand second. When you do sand first, you risk instability in your reef tank. So I decided to give it a chance. I decided to put my rock first and then dump my sand on there, but it didn't quite work. I wasn't able to get the sand in between the rock. I wasn't able to get it around the rock. It just created a really big mess on top of the rock. So I decided to just start over, do it like I always do it, and do not listen to people on the internet. My rock is very stable. My rock is not going anywhere. There are so many different ways to do things, guys. So if you find a way that works best for you, 
you. You do you. You do what works best for you. And now it's time to add our water. Of course, it's going to be salt water. Now you can pre-mix your own water or you can be lazy like me and purchase already mixed salt water from your local fish store. It's best to keep your salt at 1.026 is kind of what you're aiming for. This cloudiness is normal. It's because of just all of the new sand that you put in the fish tank that is stirred up. Your filter will work and by the next day, your water should be crystal clear. And finally, it is time to start your ammonia cycle. Again, there are so many different ways to start your ammonia cycle. I have always used the table shrimp method and that method has always worked for me. The way it works is we're just going to drop a table shrimp into the tank. It's literally a shrimp that you can eat that you buy at the grocery store. I don't know if it makes a difference, but I always buy the fresh never frozen shrimp. Whenever I do my five gallon tank, I cut it in half and I only put half of the shrimp. Leave the shrimp in for just three days to decompose. So on the third day, it was time to remove the shrimp. And I will tell you that if you do decide to use this method on that third day, the shrimp is going to be a globby mess and it's very stinky and it's very gross. Make sure that you double bag it and cover your nose because it stinks. So at this point, once you remove your shrimp, you just continue to test your water. You're just waiting for your ammonia spike, your nitrites to spike, your ammonia to go back down to zero, your nitrites to go back down to zero. And once your nitrites and your ammonia are both at zero, then you're able to do a water change and then you're able to put in your first fish. Thank you guys so much for following me on this journey. I hope that you find these videos helpful. Until next time, remember to just keep swimming and I'll see you in in the next video just keep swimming just keep swimming just keep swimming 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 what do we do with swim